Jesse De Byers is a maverick artist. He really uh, didn't fit into the main uh, frame of his period. Although he shares some common interest with other artists on Oriental culture, and particularly Japan. As a matter of fact, he became an artist really when he went to Japan in his 20s. He went in 1957, stayed there until 1968, with frequent travels to, to the US. There, he studied ceramics with what they call uh, living legend masters, textile. He studied there also the Shinto ceremonies, also haiku and tea ceremony. And that, that is what influenced his art. But of course, he was an outsider also there. He was coming from Detroit, from uh, Midwest America. He started mainly with uh, what he called actions or plays, and I would call almost uh, probably like a kind of rituals. Sometimes for, that lasted only a few seconds, sometimes only for a few people. So one of the important, he escaped all formats, and uh, it involved also not only his own kind of origami or folding papers, but also Zen painting, what they call the mu, or empty painting and with calligraphy. He found in Japan essentially what he called the dreamland of perfection, and he used all these precious materials, which is what later took him in the 80s to another city, like uh, Venice, who became really his favorite city together with Kyoto. And it, it makes sense because it was Venice that acted as the bridge between Orient and uh, Europe since its throughout history. Just after he left Japan in 1967, he published a short autobiography called James Lee Byers and a Dozen Facts. One, born in April 1932. Two, publicly schooled in Detroit, Michigan. Three, interested in philosophy. Four, lives in Kyoto, LA, San Francisco, and New York City. Five, works in paper as an artist. Six, collected by MoMA, Guggenheim, Carnegie, LA County Museum, etc. Seven, favorite sentence, like a dream, like a vision, like a bubble, like a shadow, like dew, like lightning. Favorite sight, water. Favorite sound, O. Favorite smell, seaweed. Favorite taste, poppy seed. Favorite touch, silk. He became, after Japan, a nomadic artist, traveling all, all uh, throughout America and mainly in Europe. He was mainly present in Europe and not so much in America because he didn't fit as a minimalist, which he could resemble. He was using all these precious materials which wouldn't be accepted. And also he had this figurative reference to the Vitruvian, Leonardo figure, five points make uh, a man. And uh, he, as a joke, described himself as minimalist, maybe, but Baroque minimalist, which is a, a, a paradox. He always was very precise with the choice of work for his installations. Generally, he chose historical places full of history, and usually was one work in one room. In this case, agriculture is an industrial space. So it was a challenge to know if an industrial space would play well with his uh, work. And also, we have this huge undivided space. So in a sense, we had to invent invisible rooms with the precise placement of the works, taking each space between four columns as it was one room. And hence, there is this dialogue with the words, but each one holding its own uh, space.
we opened with the Golden Tower, which was created for a huge space in Berlin, for Matikus Urbau. And we finished with the Retangelo in Marseille in El Cubo, which they, in a sense, are uh, two rooms similar to other places where he uh, installed them. Not similar in uh, appearance, but in uh, its nature. Then, in the rest of the exhibition, sometimes what he would do is he would put many works in one uh, single uh, space when he thought that uh, that was the best uh, option. We have shown that with the Red Devil and with the with White Angel, where there are many works that include both not only sculptures, but also ephemera, printed works, and uh, works he used in, in, in his place or, uh, or actions. Also, we have added a very important part of his work, which was letter writing. Letter writing in Japan uh, was a discipline in itself with, with masters, and they used folded, folded papers with different colors, and that's what he did. Every day he woke up before dawn and he used four or five hours of his time to send these letters that were like pieces to other curators, other artists, friends, etc. And here we present this exchange of work and collaborations with Mauricio Nanucci from Florence, whom he called the poet artist, and that he, that he organized also some of his events in Italy. Jesse Lee Bias was a specialist in mise en scene, in, in choreographing also his works. So here we also try to choreograph them. Uh, they are not in chronological order, but they are placed in dialogue with the one which is usually in front. That's because these frontal relationships were essential for him. And also with the one that comes next. Finally, the idea is that the whole exhibition becomes one installation or in a, a play in three acts the Golden Tower, the rest of the pieces ending up with the Red Angel of Marseille, always kind of aiming for the sublime, for the kind of way.